So we put 300 beetles out at Hemlock Hill. That's all we could get. Yeah, go on to the next slide. There. All right, you guys. What I want to tell you now, here's, where the, here's the first four releases we made. I made more than, I've made more than 30 releases. I've never stopped releasing this beetle up where we are. I've just been flinging them out. Um, the, this, the story now is this beetle occurs all around the backside of Grandfather, all through here. This is Banner Elk, so you can stand up in uh, McCray Meadow and look out to Beach Mountain or look at Beach Mountain back this way. All the hemlocks in this whole area are regrowing. They look beautiful. They've been regrowing for about five years. Go on to the next slide. So, you know, we, we, wanted, we knew that they could establish, are they having an impact locally? They're having a great impact locally. Last year I collected 22,000 of them locally for the Forest Service and I gave 90% of them to the Forest Service just to prove that this worked. I kept, you know, giving them beetles and giving them beetles and giving them beetles and they kept going, oh, this might be an exception and, you, you know, you're, you're so passionate that we're not sure if we can trust you because you're kind of crazy. And I am, but I'm crazy in a good way, okay? I'm crazy for hemlock. So we went out and did all this crazy baseline measurement. Let's not worry about that now. That's not stuff. Okay, so, but here's what you want to look at. Okay, so here, here is a tree that's had dieback, okay? So you can take these trees now. You can take the trees up where we are and you can read these trees. You can flip a limb over and look at it and you can tell where it died, where it regrew, okay? Because what we would have happen is this thing would die, the beetles would come in and then all of a sudden there'd be a bud here and it would grow out, that'd be one year, two year, three years, because I can count the bud scales. So we've had six years of regrowth now. It, it's beautiful. Oh, I did it again, didn't I? Here. Okay. Let me put this back in. I guess it really doesn't matter, does it? But maybe it does. Okay, go next. All right, so here's a big tree. We put 30 beetles on that tree, that tree's dead. It's a game of numbers. You'd need probably four or five hundred beetles to make that tree alive. But at first we didn't know that. We didn't know anything. We didn't even know if this beetle would establish, okay? So, you know, here's, here's one of our first release sites. We can go, let's just go on ahead and go through this. Let me see, blah, blah, blah. We got establishment. Okay, this is what I want to show you. Here's a Laracobius egg. Here's your hemlock woolly adelgid eggs in an ovisac. So this egg is four times bigger and yellow, so you can easily see it. When you dissect an ovisac apart, you can see these things. Go to the next slide. Here's this cute little lovable, looks like a little ladybug larvae, and this baby eats 200 to 250 eggs. Okay, so it's going to eat all the eggs in one ovisac and go to another one and feed on it, and they're not real fastidious. They don't eat every egg in an ovisac. Once they get going, they're kind of like you know, the ghosts on Ghostbusters where they're just eating hot dogs, yeah, or whatever. They just go crazy and they bust out of one oversack and go to the other. Go next. All right. Um, here's predation rates. Suffice it to say, we're getting the same kind of predation rates that we got. We're get, this, is, this is back in 2007. And so we're five years later and I haven't updated this, but we're getting about 95% predation. Okay. Oh, uh, more geek stuff, more geek stuff. Okay. These are the first five trees that we released on. Here's tree number one, tree number two, tree number three, tree number four, and then tree number five is on down. All these trees are alive, and one of the reasons that they're alive too is you've got to have sufficient sunlight. Because if these trees are in shade and they die down and they're in triple canopy, it's going to take them years, if ever, to come back. But trees on the edge that have sun and beetles will recover quickly. And that's one of the things that we're seeing now up in Banner Elk. Okay? So now nah, we don't need to look at all these. This is me going through all this data, blah, 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 blah. Bracketing, you look, you guys. So here's these principles that I started talking to foresters about that they're like, what? And I'm like, okay, this is, comes from farmscaping in my organic farm experience, transferring it over to forestry, and it worked, okay? so. Every release number down to 75, actually down to 50 beetles has taken that I have ever made a release of. Every one, 100% if you do it right, okay? So that really works great. So the other thing that I'll tell you is, that, okay, here's your winter predator. These were the Japanese. This is Chinese and this is Japanese predators. 
And so, you know, that part of it we're still working on. I think I might have a picture. Look at these guys, okay? Sasagi's been released. This was the first thing that was released. And you could raise millions of it, but it only attacks the summer generation of the adelgid and the winter one, which comes out now and is active till May, is what kills the trees. So this one was okay, and it, worked, it works pretty good, but you've got to have that Laracobius. The beetle that I discovered, or that I helped to discover, in the Pacific Northwest was a golden black beetle, didn't have those dots there. But because I had worked with Dr. Montgomery on this one, I learned the summer predators, and then I was able to go to Seattle and say, we got summer predators here, okay? And yeah, that's just the other thing. So the, what, we, what we did too, we would take those summer predators and put two to five of them in a bag, count how many ovisacs are in there, wait till they've gone through a generation to bring them back, and we get a tenfold reduction in ovisacs. Okay, yeah, we don't need, that's, so um, we're doing the field collection. We're, we're at the point now where we're operational in North Carolina and it's really very exciting now because the Forest Service has understood and seen that this works. And so they're, um, they're putting more and more resources our way to, to distribute this beetle. And in fact, yesterday I released 2,000 of these beetles in New River Gorge. I drove eight hours yesterday, so. But, so here's how I would do it. I would put them in these little cartons. Um, depending on, if they were going into a quarantine lab, I'd just leave them on food, because they could do it that way. If they were going out into the field, I'd put them on Spanish moss so we didn't transport anything that was on those needles. And then put um, filter paper with water and also a little ladybug diet. And, and they, they don't die. I mean, you can leave them in there for almost a week. I think they end up getting depressed because they don't see sun, you know. And, but anyway, so we're able to collect thousands and thousands and thousands of these. Go on. So here's how I would ship them. I would end up going and getting cup of new, cup of noodles, and the flavor here is Laracobius flavor. I changed it to Laracobius flavor and put it back on there. And so then what we would do, and I'll tell you guys back, this is right after 9-11, uh, or you know, pretty soon afterwards, and if you ship stuff, people were really particular. So David is with me, and I said, we're going to go into FedEx, and I want you to keep your mouth shut and listen to what I say. So I go in, they say, is this a lot, or is there anything living in here? And I say, no, they're dead insect specimens. Okay, we'll ship them. And they asked me a bunch of other weird questions trying to catch me, and then we walked out, Dave went, oh my God, I never would have been able to mail those things. And I said, that's because for us to do some of the things that we've had to do, we have to bend the system slightly, all right? So, you know, we made the releases. Um, at, you know, listen, we've got establishment, you guys, it's over, it's eight miles in every direction now. That's, you know, and here's, look, here, I was, I was this is what I was gonna try to, now I'm up to, uh, I did 27,500 beetles and Pat would always go, we need 100,000, we need more than 100,000. So Pat, this year, I'm gonna try, I don't know if I'll make it, but I'm, I, 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 teamwork. I teamwork, exactly, right. We need to get these so AS, these sustainable development students to help me collect this stuff. And you spent what, about half an hour teaching me how to do it? Yeah, oh yeah, I, I showed him and hit an umbrella and he went up to Mountain Air and he hit the spot where he put beetles out and found beetles right off the bat. <laughs> and that makes perfect oh, sense. Boom. I found the first one of the day. Yeah, right. It, yeah. Okay. That's enough on this. Let's anyway. So long story short, you guys, we really did, um, and based on the trees, we really did. You know, we we us little hillbillies. I didn't even know what a hemlock was 12 years ago. I knew it was a tree, and I knew that there was a poison hemlock. So the only other thing, if you want to go to Dr. McBug real quick, I'm just show people the resources for, I have a picture of every bug that we saw today. Some of them aren't great, but you know what I mean, is if you need, if you need a resource or you're having trouble going to sleep at night, go to this website, all right? So here's farmscaping. Um, go to, go to beneficial, okay? So here's how I teach this stuff. I start with ladybugs, because I want everybody to know ladybugs. If you scroll down in this, is there a way to scroll down? Yeah, okay, keep going. That just shows how a lady, okay, here, keep, yeah, that's good, right there. All right, so here's the first ladybug that we always find in our broccoli patches, and so I list it first, which is C7. 
It's always out there crawling on the dirt clods and it's headed for these little green plants, so I really like it. If you guys look here, here's C7 eggs with my dirty fingernail. Here's a, a larva turning into a pupa, so you see what the larvae are. And here's a C7 pupa, which a lot of people squash, right? Because they think it's, you know, when I go to, to uh, uh, some of these seminars or Southern SOG or CFSA, people always say, oh, I've been squashing those. I thought that, you know, and I'm like, no, no, no. Come down here a little further. The other thing that you can do, you guys, you, I, we don't need to do this now, but you can click on these photos and they enlarge. So one of the big things that we always like with C7 is yarrow because it has a lot of, oh, cool. Yeah, so there's a pretty good picture of a C7. So the, there's four main species of ladybugs. It's getting late. How much time have we got? 20, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Okay. I don't, need, I don't need to go through all these, but if you, I mean, what I want to tell you guys is here's a resource. It's a little homespun and blocky. I need to get in and update it a little bit. But everything we saw out there today is on this, and it has all the little quirks that Pat and I uh, come back out again. Or go to pests, real quick. Just go to pests. Bam. And more and more of these are going to also be new pictures are going to be showing up on our website. Yeah, and I need to get. You need to link to our site too. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah. I'm definitely going to do that. Here's a picture of Pat's. This is his machata squash where he, they had like, or butternut squash where you had how many tons of that did you have? It was Tahitian wintermelon and butternut. We got. More than a ton. And we'd go to Highland Lake and they'd stored them in all of the, uh, the, the uh, stairs going down where they had the double doors, you know, because every house had an old, uh, old side thing. So they filled, yeah, they filled those side cellars just full. You'd open it up and I'm like, they can't get down here. There's squashes everywhere. Go down a little further. If you <laughs> okay, so uh, click on this. That's all right. You'll see a lot. You'll see it. Okay, well, here. Yeah, click on that, and then we'll go down one. And then uh, I'll kind of just let uh, everybody kind of. Okay, here's the example, and this is Jake's farm from about six years ago. Here is his Mizuna. This was actually Johnny's salad mix, is what it was. You know what I mean? He had the whole thing. And so here it is unmarketable, all right? We irrigate nematodes in. I should have spread these apart a little bit more, but you could, this is marketable. So, you know, what started happening right away, we got rid of onion maggot, we got rid of flea beetles, we got rid of Mexican bean beetles, and we controlled all of his crucifer pests in one seat. Mexican bean beetles? Yeah, because he had, he had beans, like we used, um, Pediobius. Yeah, you know what I mean. Oh, he had an, he had an eight, he had two acres of beans, and he called me up. He was ecstatic because he said, "I have no." And the other thing that you'll see, if you come yeah, come back in here, go down a little further. All right, um, click on that. So here's what we. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Okay, there's three things here. Here's that imported cabbage worm that we saw out there that had been killed by BT, right? So there it is. So when I'm scouting, then I know that, all right? And that becomes one of the things I'm scouting for. Here's a brassica aphid that's landed here, and there's a brassica flea beetle, not the two line beetle. There's one that's yellow and has two lines. That's another brassica. These do not go to potatoes, and they don't go to uh, solanaceous plants. They're specific to crucifers. So if you know that, you can, you can trick these things, okay? Um, let's go back to beneficials. And I want to show them some shots of Pediobius. Go all the way down to the bottom. Let's see. And be good to show them the um, golden rod, too. Okay, what, um, I'll tell you what. Go to pests again. I'm sorry. We'll do this. And go, let's see what comes up should come up. Go roll all the way down to the bottom because this is all the way down. Okay, here you go. All right, so that's okay. So here's Mexican bean beetle or and also remember squash beetle. These two are very similar. So yeah. what controls Mexican bean beetle will control squash beetle because they're both epilactic. And we have these right. out, out the garden today. 
So here's, uh, you know, this is a magnified photo. Yeah, you saw those. And you see these. Now, the trick to tell them from ladybug uh, eggs, there's usually way more eggs, okay? And they're spaced out a little bit more. Well, and the other thing is, is if they're on beans, it's kind of like, well, duh. You know, pretty much they're, they're, uh, they're Mexican bean beans. Even though it's dark, Look at this because thing. it might be lady beetle eggs, and I know I can control them with pediobiates, I don't squish anything that looks like ladybug eggs. Yeah. I have to be certain, you know, that it's, it's the bean beetle. Yeah, I'm go not over not to the right a little. Bean. Yeah, that, you're going to have to go to the right. Yeah, I know. And I don't know if you saw on our website, ah, everybody sweet. in this class made a picture of these guys and bracketing on the same, on the same leaf there were eggs and a lady beetle, a ladybug larva eating the eggs. So both of, both, of these are pup, uh, both of these are parasitized. This one is just now starting to show it where it's puffed up. So if I looked at that, I would know, as a scout, I know that that's parasitized. Kind of like how I look at imported, I can just tell. Parasitized by the wasp. By the wasp, by Pediobius, right. And so what happens then, when they, what happens is this one in about two or three days is gonna look like this one. And then what happens is, about 10 or a dozen exit holes come out of the top, boom, and these wasps come out, okay? So if you have umbellifera, if you have really fine nectar, floral nectaries, these things will just reproduce like crazy. What happens is first they hit the big larvae, then they hit the medium larvae, and then pretty soon they're hitting a the little tiny larvae, and then you have no larvae. And they actually take a few pupa out too. Okay. At the very beginning, the beginning of the pupation. Right, when they get in there, they can hit them. Okay. 